big honor for some special dogs today. Plus a warning about the Zika virus and a new complication that could affect our brain. Wow. Yeah. Lisa. Yeah, I know, because this is we've been talking a lot about women who are pregnant or want to, you know, have a baby mm -hmm. that they need to be worried. Now it looks like it's pretty much everyone needs oh. to be worried. They're linking another one. A new disease may be linked to the Zika virus, and this could affect anyone, as we were just talking about. And it has nothing to do with pregnancy and everything to do with our brains. Federal health officials are growing more concerned about the Zika virus. Everything we look at with this virus seems to be a bit scarier than we initially thought. The biggest concern is for pregnant women and their babies. The virus is linked to microcephaly, which causes babies to be born with abnormally small heads, and now other complications like prematurity and eye problems. The virus is likely to be a problem at um, much of the pregnancy period, not just probably the first trimester. So far, 346 cases of Zika have been reported, all related to travel. 32 were pregnant women, seven were sexually transmitted, and one person developed a rare illness of the nervous system called Guillain Barre. Scientists in Brazil are also investigating a link between Zika and another disease that attacks the brain and spinal cord in adults. It's similar to MS. Meanwhile, health officials are hoping the White House can help pressure Congress to free up $1.9 billion in emergency funds. They requested that more than two months ago. It is not enough for us to get the job done. I mean, it's just a, a, a temporary stopgap. So bottom line, experts are worried. The mosquitoes that spread Zika are now in 30 states, not just the 12 they were thought to lurk in. While we absolutely hope we don't see widespread local transmission in the continental U.S., we need the states to be ready for that. Well, testing of the first Zika vaccine is supposed to start in September. Meanwhile, here's what you can do. Cover up and wear repellent to avoid getting bitten, especially as you travel. All right, look at that, Angel. Well, your kids may like this. Guidelines for how much time they spend staring at a screen are going to change. A new survey from BabyCenter.com reveals one in three kids, get this, get their own tablet by the age of five. But roughly one in 15 actually has their own smartphone. By five, I know. I was. It's true. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends kids two and over right now get no more than two hours in front of a screen. Kids under two, no screen time at all. Those guidelines are now being updated to better reflect kind of how we live. The new guidelines will be released this fall. And they're talking about things like time to Skype or FaceTime with grandma and grandpa and mm. if you do your homework later. So they're going to be looking at that and probably adding some screen time to that. Whatever happened to just a mobile going around like, you know? Big mobile yeah, like or playtime and under for, yeah. for, on a for smartphone a anyway. You know, usually <laughs> parents could could supervise the FaceTime and you do it on your own and we're not or your computer. I mean, that conservative, you know, right? Decent yeah. parents. That's just it's yeah. No, get them a fake phone. You know, just really? a piece of block. No, they won't know the difference. No. They'll be talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now this is my absolute favorite story of the day. It's an anniversary celebration at Children's Hospital LA. The party for a devoted team of therapy dogs and their handlers. Yep, take a look. The bone shaped cake says it all 365. That's how many days in a row. How cute. This team of therapy dogs have come to the aid of patients here. In fact, 107 canine candy stripers bring joy to those who need it most. They visit patients to relieve stress, bring smiles, even help with pain control. When I wasn't feeling good, um, a dog would come in and, like, all my pain would go away. Just seeing a dog made me happy. Oh, well, Erica Daniels got partial paralysis after having brain surgery. She says dog therapy helped her learn to use her arm again. 20 loving pooches showed up for today's celebration. And each one left with their, get it everyone, their very own doggy bag. <laughs> very cute. Those dogs like that too. Yeah, they they're are. so they do good for the kids. That black Newfoundland yeah. looks like, you could ride that one. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> that was huge. That's a huge dog. It no, all really says was. they slobber. So. <laughs> all right. Thank you.